everyone, hope you're doing well out there. For anyone watching this video who hasn't seen any of my previous videos before, I am Mel and this channel is Mel's Health. It's a channel that I created a few years ago to follow on my health journey and testing experiences following a diagnosis of blood clots in my lungs. It's been a real long time since I made a YouTube video, well over a year I think now, um, but YouTube emailed me recently to let me know that the channel had received over 500 subscribers. So firstly, I wanted to make a video update just to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far and please to pass this channel on to anyone that you think may find the information useful or if they are unfortunately going through the same thing. Um, but yeah, I kind of wish the topic of my channel was a bit more of a positive one, but if you are watching because you are dealing with these issues yourself or if a loved one is going through it, I do hope that all is going well out there and I can offer you some useful information. So to keep this short and palatable, um, my current situation is that I am now over three years out from a bilateral submassive pulmonary embolism. Uh, meaning that I had multiple large blood clots in both of my lungs. I was 32 at the time, I'm 35 now. I'm prescribed warfarin daily, which I will be on for the rest of my life because even though the doctors think that me being on the contraceptive pill around the time of diagnosis could have been a factor, I was also diagnosed with protein S deficiency. Now, all of that information is covered really in depth in a lot of my previous videos so once you've watched this one please do feel free to look through the channel and look at all my older videos where you'll find a lot of more a lot more detail around everything that i just described so to get into how life is now three years on i would definitely say that life post blood clots has never really gotten back to normal um, I've definitely seen doctors regularly since all this was happening maybe more so within the last year because i pushed for answers on the basically kind of three main symptoms that I seem to be um, getting that are ongoing since all of this kind of happened, which I felt were related to the blood clot incident and things that are just kind of dragging on. So there's three main things that I've been kind of taking to the doctors to try and get figured out. And the first one is um, like aches and pains. So things like jabs around like my lungs so it's always it's always my lung area so I'll get like a jab of pain a bit of a bit of an ache um just just general kind of like some sort of niggle that just uh, lets you know that everything isn't just fine um that kind of happens on a daily basis nothing that's like incapacitating but just something to remind you that not everything is going that is going okay in there um the second thing is like shortness of breath um, and not just like shortness of breath in the sense of I do exercise and then I get like ridiculously out of breath or anything like that. I do get that, but I can also get it when I just talk too much or if I go on a short walk, my breathing doesn't kind of match the exercise level. It's always the breath that gets really, really short. I sound like I'm really, very, very out of breath, like I'm struggling, but I'm actually not. I don't feel tired at all. I kind of have tuned it out now that I'm even breathing that heavily because it's just kind of become that normal way of me breathing. Um, but again, to everybody else, it looks like I'm struggling, so it's not normal. The last one is this kind of dizziness, wooziness, disorientated type of feel, which I have only been able to describe to the doctors as that feeling you get when you get off a boat and still feel like you're on a boat at the motion of the ocean. You can get it after like long car journeys, plane journeys, anything like that, where you kind of lay down later on and you kind of still feel like you're moving. Um, the only thing with me is that I can just be sat at my desk and same with like the jab and the pain in the side when I'm just sat down doing nothing. I can also get that with the whole wooziness kind of feeling. I'll just be sat at my desk doing nothing and then I'll just get a bit like wheezy um, and then it'll go away. And again, nothing that completely incapacitates me, but something that's not right. So what kind of started around about a year ago is the doctors wanted to rule out any kind of sinister stuff. So they looked at like my head and my heart and it started about a year, almost to the day I had an MRI of my head, which came back fine. I had like an EKG, I wore a Holter monitor for 24 hours, had ultrasound of my heart. Um, the Holter monitor is also a, a heart monitor that you wear for like 24 hours. Um, and all of those kept coming back normal. They were like, well, head, heart, that all seems to be working fine. Nothing is out of the ordinary, that should be okay. So the doctors decided to put more effort into the respiratory side of things um, because obviously the lungs is where most of this was uh, originated from. 
So I had a lung function test just to kind of see how well they were working and that came back fine. And then the respirologist sent me for a stress test following that, which is basically like the exercise style version. So um, I went in again, you're put with all the, all the stickies on for the heart monitor, put a mask on and uh, put on an exercise bike where you're like pedaling against resistance, but you have to kind of keep it at a certain level. So it's gonna get harder, a bit like you're pedaling up a really big hill, but you have to kind of keep the same pace and you do that for as long as you can. Um, and the results that came from that initially where the report was just pretty much fine. There was nothing out of the ordinary, nothing to kind of be too concerned about. So I got put back to my family doctor again. Um, and it was just, we kept coming to these dead ends. Like every, all these tests just seemed to be fine, but I wasn't really gonna let this go. So I was just like, well, something has to be, like, you know, an explanation as to why I'm getting these like three main symptoms. And it's, it's every day. It's not like I can kind of get on and forget about this. I just want some answers. So, my family doctor decided to refer me to a local doctor who, even though this isn't his area of um, expertise, um, he's usually very thorough and he's known locally as just being a very smart guy. So she was like, I'm going to refer you to him, see what answers he can kind of come up with. And uh, he, he lived up to his word. Um, when I went in for the appointment, he kind of did his usual tests and stuff and kind of figured that in general, I was a, appearing as, a, as just an average 35 year old person. Um, nice and healthy looking and all that but um, he looked into the notes and he looked at the stress test notes and he was like oh there's all this medical jargon it's not my area to area of expertise but there is the word insufficiency embedded in there so I want a bit more information about that so he called the doctor just straight up who did the initial report and read the results of the stress test and he said oh there is a typo it should say this 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 deficiency so it was actually supposed to <laughs> highlight that there was actually something going on with me and in the midst of all the medical jargon the main thing that came out of it was that the deficiency is me getting rid of the co2 so in terms of all these tests like the lung function tests and all that stuff i am getting the oxygen in so it's like yes okay my lungs are working i can actually breathe in but where the deficiency came from the stress test and me feeling tired and out of breath and everything else was me not expelling enough carbon dioxide and I said to him, well, you know, carbon dioxide in excess can make people feel, you know, like dizzy and stuff. Could that, could this be part of, you know, why I'm having these symptoms? He was like, well, yeah, I think that's what's something that could be kind of looked into a bit more. So where that then led, and this is all very fresh, what I'm about to kind of go into was, it's literally like within the last two weeks of my life. Um, he said, let's do a repeat VQ scan. And I'm gonna link the video down below, but I had, I had a VQ scan uh, six months after my initial diagnosis and in a nutshell it is a nuclear medicine scan that monitors the airflow in the lungs and it monitors the blood flow in the lungs and it does that by you inhale a radioactive tracer and then they inject you with a radioactive tracer, they do two sets of scans and they look at the oxygen and they look at the blood flow to see if there's any mismatches anywhere. And if there is a mismatch in your ratios of like the oxygen going around your lungs and the blood going around your lungs, then you know you've got a problem. So three years ago, when I had that test, um, I had a mismatch. It was a perfusion mis mis mismatch, which means that the blood flow wasn't um, adding up to what it, what it should be. So the blood flow, when I had active clotting, the blood wasn't getting to where it needed to be, which makes sense. The clots are getting in the way of the blood flow around the lungs. So that kind of made sense at the time. What happened this time, literally like a week ago, um, the doctor called me and the test looked exactly the same as it did three years ago. So before he'd gone into my background, he actually called me and the first thing he said was, I need to get you to a hospital because you need to be put on an anticoagulant. And I was like, well, I'm already on one. I'm prescribed warfarin for life. Gave him the full background. He looked at my scan from three years ago and he was like, wow, he's like, they actually look pretty much the same. So I have a perfusion mismatch currently meaning I have a blood flow mismatch. Um, and that offered me such an explanation as to why I've been feeling the way I was feeling. So the follow-up CT scans I had the last few years, they showed that the clots had broken down. I had no active clotting. I had like minimal scarring and a few pulmonary nodules, but nothing of concern. So there isn't actually anything actively blocking those areas of my lungs, but the blood is still not getting there despite me being on an anticoagulant and having been regularly for the last three years. So that leaves me with where I'm at now. Um, 
Perfusion mismatch can lead to something called hypoxemia, which is the low level of oxygen in your blood. And symptoms of that can be shortness of breath, headaches, rapid heartbeat, disorientation, coughing, a whole range of things. But I can tick off a few of those as the things that I've been dealing with and presenting to my doctors with for the last couple of years. And it kind of now boils down to, oh, for this entire time, the blood hasn't been going where it's supposed to be going. I've got low levels of oxygen in my blood. So we're now back waiting for the respirologist to uh, call me and see where we go from here. And Dr. Google says it's oxygen therapy to kind of force the oxygen into your cells and yada, 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 and get you, get you going. But I'm not gonna rely on Dr. Google. I'm gonna wait for the actual specialist, the respirology specialist to get back to me and let me know what steps we take from here. So I'm gonna aim to keep this channel updated with whatever I learn in the next few weeks to months and how uh, the journey might be in recovery from this point. Um, but this was just a good stepping stone, um, the 500 subscribers and doing a three year update and everything else just to kind of show you the level that I'm at. It's not the most positive of updates, but it does offer me an explanation and it's not like life has stopped because of all of this. I am still in, you know, it's summer right now. I've been out mountain biking in the winter. I've been skiing. So um, it's not like life has stopped and it's not like I am in absolute agony on a day to day basis and I just can't do anything. I'm not I'm not incapacitated in the slightest. And I know I've used that word a lot this video, um, but it's just something that is ongoing. It's something that is annoying on a daily basis. And now hopefully I will get some answers and be able to follow up on it. So, um, yeah, keep your eye out on this channel. I'm going to try and keep it updated and I'll let you know what happens over the next few weeks to months. And if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.